Hey guys, welcome back to another episode. It's been a very long time since my last episode because we've been renovating and here's my half renovated house. And yeah. But before we um, hop into this episode, I would like to thank some of the people who have gave me grab bags. The first person who gave me a grab bag is Philada Lovely. He has Twitter, he has a couple of social media pages which I'll link in the description below. Um, but he gave me this free, pa um, free packet of his. If you go to Patreon, Patreon, you can find his um, Philada Lovely, Philada Lovely page and you can buy certain tiers and it'll send you certain stamps there's a kid tier will give you like some games i think and then some stamps so he gave me a free packet which i like and inside of it he has some first day covers um random worldwide stamps a sticker and a couple two postcards the next person i'd like to thank is andrew turngren who gave me a giant grab bag um, of a bunch of worldwide stamps that I have to soak off paper. I haven't even soaked half of them off yet. He also gave me this, and it's Old Glories, which is the U.S. flag's proudest moments. So it's like important events in the American flag's history. Um, these are event covers, I believe you call them. The next grab bag is a friend from Wales. Um, who sent me uh, in this envelope, and I like this little label. Um, they're fun to collect, little labels like this. Um, as you can see, this one is from Paddington Bear, the movie, because you can see PB and then Marmalade, which he loves, in his little suitcase. Um, so yeah, she, I mean, he gave me a lot of British Commonwealth and laid out neatly in little, I forget what you call them, but Here's a picture of one of the things. Next we have Thelma Schmidt, who is from South Africa. Um, she gave me a beautiful grab bag. And she, yeah. Here's two first day covers. And then she gave me some stamps, which are in here. And she wrote a note to me and before I got this grab bag, I was wondering why are there some little super small South African stamps and are they like fake? And she told me that these stamps, which she gave me, which some of them were the little ones, they had a shortage of paper in World War II. So they printed on little stamps so they could save on paper. Um, our next grab bag is from Paul Zaperzan. His last name is of Ukraine origin. He he put everything in neat little bags, like plastic little bags, and he had a lot of postal stationery. He told me, hey Exis, you'll find many different items in this grab bag. And then he said, I've also included a wide variety of items from, diff items from different areas of Philately. And then he said, from Canada, since that's where I'm from. To give you ideas, you might like to explore for your collecting interests. Some of them was postcards, letter cards, wrappers, envelopes, aerograms, meter cov and meter covers. Finally, um, a friend from Northern California, um, I forgot to get his name, sent me a grab bag full of a lot of Italian stamps and a few other like US stamps. And yeah, that's all the people I have to thank. TED Talk Stamps, a fellow philatelic YouTuber, will show on videos his viewers' top 10, 5, or 1 favorite stamps. So I'm going to start doing it because I thought it was a cool idea. And all you have to do is send me an email, and I'll tell you in the description my email. Um, and, it'll, and then you share your top 10 or whatever number like a not super high number of stamps you like and show me the pictures and then label them with their numbers and tell me 
why you like them, give me a couple reasons or one reason why you like that stamp, and I will show people on one of my videos. So, yeah. Wait, what was I supposed to say? The last recordings were Christmas Eve, and now it's March 3rd. I've had a few delays, including my grandpa passing away, and we're still renovating. Um, as you can see, I'm in a new room. This is our school room for homeschooling, and I did like all the wood in here, and I cut in the ceilings. Um, so yeah. So let's get to the stamp part. This stamp was issued by British Hong Kong on May 4th, 1982. The currency is five Hong Kong dollars, and it was from the Wild Animal series. I was wondering how the British got Hong Kong. This whole time I thought Hong Kong was a big city, which it is, but before that it was an island. So I'm going to tell you how the British got hold of Hong Kong and then how it got back to the Chinese. Great Britain has always loved tea since it was first introduced to them from China. Unfortunately for, Ch for Britain, the only item they trade for it was silver bullion. But then the British hit upon an item which was the drug opium. Unfortunately for China, this drug slayed the people. In 1830s, China banned opium. The British, however, um, continued smuggling opium into China. So that made the Chinese mad and they destroyed all the opium in, their, in the British trading port in Canton. The British ignored them and smuggled opium into China. However, China decided to destroy the opium in the British trading port or post in Canton. British responded by declaring war. They won the war and forced China to pay a high indemnity, open up new ports for trade, and give Hong Kong Island to them in a treaty called the Treaty of Nanking. After the Second Opium War, the British pushed for legalization of opium trade and sought more trading ports. In 1860, the bottom point of Kowloon Peninsula and Stonecutters Island were added to the colony. In 1898, Britain dictated a lease for t new territories, lasting for 99 years until 1997. In the 20th century, growth in Hong Kong was amazing. Many Chinese refugees came because of many things, including the fall of the Monk Dynasty to the fall of Shanghai to the Communists. In 1956, the population of Hong Kong was 2.5 million. In as 1997 came near, many meetings took place. In 1984, Britain's Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher signed the Sino-British Joint Declaration agreeing to give Hong Kong to the Chinese Communists on June 30th, 1997. On June 30th, 1997, Chris Patton, British Governor of Hong Kong, sailed off the island while 4,000 Chinese troops marched in with their new leader, Tung Chi Hua. So that wraps up the story of how Britain got their hands on Hong Kong Island. So now let's learn about the Munchak deer pictured on this stamp. The barking deer, or Munchak, is native to Asia and can be found in southern China, Taiwan, the Indonesian islands, Myanmar, Vietnam, Sri Lanka, and India. The average lifespan is 10 years. In the 1920s, Munjaks escaped from an estate in England and are now increasing in number. They can be found in Scotland and Northern Ireland too. The males have downward pointing canine teeth or tusks that they will use to fend for their territory. They also, the males also grow antlers, but they do not use them for fighting. Munjaks eat grass, shoots, leaves, seeds, bird eggs, fungi, tree bark, and seeds. The name barking deer comes from the barking noises they make to um, warn other munchaks of predators. I also want to point out one feature of the stamp I liked. So I liked how it showed the deer and then it was all yellow in the background. But at the bottom, it showed like little rocks and pebbles where the munchak was standing. Anyways, that's all for this video. Thanks for watching and thanks um, for bearing with me like for how long it took for me to upload a new season, I mean a new episode for my season and a new video altogether. So thank you once again 
and I'll see you down the line.